Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Cloud, and I'm here to explain some accounting. In this video, I'm explaining how we can account for various different equity transactions. And a lot of these transactions focuses on the shareholders, which are the owners of the company. So looking at a private placement, a share issue to the general public with partial repayments, bonus issue, share splits, a dividend that's paid to ordinary shareholders, and then looking at some transactions with retained profits. I'll put a link to a template in the description of this video so you can follow along. In year one, Harrington Limited is seeking funding to build a bullet train from Sydney to Canberra. They approach Great Mac Bank, who has agreed to accept an offer by Harrington Limited for a private placement of $890 million. Each share will be worth $8. The question asks you to record the journal entry for this private placement. The first thing that you need to think about is what type of transaction this is. Is it with an unsophisticated investor, like the general public, or is it with a sophisticated investor? And it's the latter, because it's a bank and it's a private placement. That's how we know and so that leads us secondly to how we treat this particular uh, equity transaction. So we're going to skip out having to do a prospectus and we don't need to use any cash trust account. And we're gonna go straight to debiting cash, 890 million and crediting share capital, 890 million. So we're doing an exchange of receiving cash from Great Mac Bank in, in turn creating equity. And we're giving the Great Mac Bank some shares in this company. So we move along to year two. Harrington Limited has broken ground on the bullet train construction. And the board believe that a public offering would provide additional funds necessary for this project. So this is a general share issue. It's to the public. So they are unsophisticated investors. So we need to protect them by issuing a prospectus. And also we're going to be using the cash trust account. This protects the shareholders in the event that the share issue is unsuccessful. And it means that the company can't spend the money unless the share capital raising is successful. So the board resolved to do a partial payment share issue. So $6 is due an application. $3 on allotment, and $1 is due as future calls. So then they receive applications for 900 million shares, and all sh allotment money was received. And all shares are allocated. So we're asked to record the journal entries for the share issue. So the first journal entry, we need to collect all of the, the monies that we receive from the public into the cash trust account. So this is an asset account. It's held in trust by the solicitors of the company. So we debit cash trust, uh, 5,400 million, and credit application, 5,400 million. We then going to create the share capital. The share issue was successful. That's what it tells us in the question. So we do this by debiting the application account where the application account represents an obligation to either issue shares or do a refund. So we debit application to close that account off, 5,400 million and credit share capital, 5,400 million. We calculated that amount based on the $6 due on application times the 900 million shares. We then can release the funds from the cash trust account because the share issue is successful. So we do this by debiting cash and crediting cash trust for 5,400 million. So this means now that the company can start spending the money on the bull and train construction because the share issue was successful. We can then also recognize the amount of money that's due on allotment. So that's the second stage where the question told us that $3 was due an allotment. So we debit the allotment account, which is a contra uh, equities account. So it's debit natured. 
It rec represents an obligation by our shareholders to pay us for that money because we issued them shares. So that's for the $3 times 900 million shares. So 2,700 million. We then credit share capital to recognize the increase in our equity because we're gonna receive more funds from the shareholders. The last journal entry there that we have is to record the actual receipt of allotment monies from our shareholders. The question tells us that um, all of the allotment money was received. So we debit this for the entire amount. We debit cash 2,700 million and credit allotment 2,700 million. So in year three now, we, we've got the Harrington Limited's directors resolving to create a general reserve account using 400 million from retained profits. So we can, uh, at any time, uh, directors can record uh, a, a reserve account. It's typically created through a transfer from retained profits or it could be transferred from another reserve account. So to do this, we need to debit retain profits. So that's an equity account. By debiting it, we reduce that balance by 40 million and we credit Gen Reserve to create that account. It's an equity account, so credit it 40 million. We then move on to year four. So Harrington Limited directors believe that extra funding is required for the bullet train project. So they resolve to make a call and they're calling up the remaining $1 per share that's on those 900 million shares that we previously issued to the general public. So the call money was received, we're told, except for one shareholder that had a parcel of 2 million shares. So we can record uh, the call and also the receipt of the call. So the first journal entry that we do is for the amount that we are owed by the shareholders. So we debit the call account, which is a contra equity account. So it's debit natured. It represents an obligation by our shareholders to pay us this call. So it's going to be for $1 times 900 million shares. So 900 million, we debit the call. We credit share capital in anticipation of receiving this additional funds from the shareholders. So credit share capital, 900 million. The last journal entry that we're going to record is the receipt of the call money. So we have to look at, okay, how much money did we receive? And so we were told that there was one shareholder who perhaps they forgot to pay. We just didn't receive their money. They had 2 million shares. So to calculate how much call monies we received, it's the 900 million minus 2 million shares times $1. So we're going to debit cash for 898 million and credit call 898 million. So this recognizes the fact that we received only 898 million. The call account is not yet closed off. So we might contact that shareholder, remind them to pay their call, and in the meantime, that call, uh, call balance will just remain in the balance sheet until it's paid or until it's forfeited. In year five, Harrington Limited's project of the bullet train has been progressing well. Harrington Limited's CBD headquarters tower has just been revalued to 340 million. This has resulted in an increase of 120 million in the revaluation surplus account. So the directors resolved to provide a bonus share issue to the shareholders. For every two shares held by a shareholder, they will receive a $1 bonus issue share. Directors have set the value of these bonus shares at $10 per share. The current balance of the shares at year, year five that are eligible for this bonus issue is 11,240,000 shares. So you're asked to record the journal entry for the bonus issue. So the bonus issue is being paid out of revaluation surplus. So we're transferring out of an equity account and we're creating some share capital through the transfer of, this, of these past profits. In a way, the past profits, we're increasing the value of the headquarters. It's 
So in order to transfer it out of an equity account revaluation surplus, we debit that account for 56.2 million and we credit share capital, we create these bonus shares of 56.2 million. And we calculated that amount based on the value of those shares, so ten dollars per share, and that it was two shares. For every two shares held, they receive one bonus share. So that means we take the amount of shares that are that are eligible, so the eleven point two four million shares, we divide it by, by two, and then multiply it by ten dollars per share. That's how we got the fifty six point two million. Now we come along to year six. Harrington Limited's directors now believe that the shares of the companies have become too thinly traded. They resolve to do a split of the shares. Each share will be split into 10 shares. After the share split is being conducted, the directors declare on the 24th of August to issue a 15 cent ordinary dividend from retained profits and pay the dividend on the 28th of October. Prior to the share split, there were 16,860,000 shares eligible for this dividend. Record the transactions in year six. So the share split. Now share splits do not result in any journal entry. This is because they don't change the balance. They're just dividing up the same amount of share capital into just smaller portions. And on the market, this will be reflected as well. And it will mean that the market price per share will decrease, but it increases the number of shares that can be actively traded. So no journal entry for the share split. We do have some journal entries for the dividend. So we're going to have a journal entry to record that the dividend is owing at the 24th of August when the directors resolve to issue that to uh, provide that dividend and we're going to have a journal entry on the 28th of October to record the payment of the dividend. So we're going to record the dividend being declared. So we're going to debit retain profits 25,290,000 and credit dividend payable 25,290,000. How did we calculate the dividend payment amount? It's equal to the number of shares that are eligible which is 16,860,000 multiplied by 10. That's because of the share split. There are now 10 shares for every one share that used to exist. And then we multiply by 15 cents per share. That is the dividend per share amount. On the 28th of October, we then pay the dividend. We debit dividends payable, whereby we discharge the liability for 25 million 290,000 and we credit cash to recognize this cash payment 25,290,000 then we come along to the last part of this question so as at the 30th of June in year 7 Harrington Limited had the following information about the retained profits account and its transactions so we had an opening balance we had net profit dividends declared and paid had a bonus issue and had a transfer made to general reserve. So we're asked to calculate the closing balance of retained profits account for the period. So retained profits, it's a credit natured account. So we need to put the opening balance in on the credit side. So we pop that in 2,314 million. We then record the net profit on the credit side of 1,789 million. So the net profit, it increases that equity account. So now we can add up everything on the credit side. It comes to 4,103 million. The debit side, we've got the transfer to general reserve. So that decreases the retained profits account. That's for 90 million. We record the dividends. So the dividends reduces the retained profits account and we're told that the amount that was declared and paid was 260 million so we pop that in. We do not record the bonus issue of 50 million shares issued from revaluation reserve 
in the retained profits account because it is not going to impact retained profits. So we're going to simply just leave it out. This bonus issue would appear in the share capital and the revaluation reserve T accounts. So now what we do is take the balance of the credit side, 4,103 million, minus on the debit side, 90 million, 260 million. So this gives us our closing balance on the debit side of 3,753 million. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out my other videos on various accounting topics.